of it being Halloween month, I'm going to be reading to you today Beneath the Bed. It's a scary story and it's written by Max Brellier. I'm going to read you the first page. It has a little note. Dear reader, I like stories that are cold, dark, and surprising. Just like the stories in this book. A strange box was left on my doorstep. A dead mouse sat beside it. Here's what I found inside. A tree branch, a doll's eye, a piece of an old quilt, a toy's rusty head. Ooh, creepy. There was also a notebook in the box. This was the note taped to it. Promise me, Mr. Shivers, that you will share the stories inside this book. So this book is my promise. I pass these stories to you, and I hope you will like the scary stories because these stories will make you shiver. So the first story I'm going to be reading is Beneath the Bed. Kids at school said the old house on the hill was filled with ghosts. The kids dared me to visit the house. They dared me to visit at night. They dared me to visit every room. I begged my sister Beth to go with me. Please Beth, can we go to the haunted house? Would you guys take that dare? I don't know if I would. After I asked five times, she said, <sighs> okay. Beth and I walked up to the house. The wind howled. Beth said, John, I am scared. Me too, I said. But if we don't do this, the kids at school will say we're scaredy cats. We walked up on the porch steps. The wood moaned like it was warning us to stop. The house felt alive. I pushed open the door. We took a deep breath. <gasps> Come on, I said, as we stepped inside. What do you think is gonna happen? In the kitchen, dusty dishes sat on the table. In the living room, a sofa was covered with a sheet. In the library, a book sat open like it was waiting for a reader. There was only one room left to visit, the attic bedroom. <laughs> Beth and I went up, up, up. The bedroom was cold and dark and damp. I gasped. <gasps> Two tiny lights glowed beneath the bed. I, Beth grabbed my hand. Those lights look like eyes, she whispered. A chain hung from my ceiling, or from the ceiling. My hand shook as I tugged it. Click! Light filled the room. A doll sat beneath the bed. Beth giggled. <laughs> they are eyes, she said. They are only the small painted eyes on an old doll. <clears throat> there are no ghosts in this house, I said, smiling. That is right, the doll said. It is just the three of us. Pretty creepy at the end. The doll talks. Would you be scared if you saw that doll under the bed and it said, that is right, just the three of us at the end? I know I would be. Thanks for listening to my story. It's a little bit spooky. The next story we read will be about Halloween, but it will be a little bit less scary and just more fun and it's called the night before halloween and this one's by cynthia F fisher
And if you look at the front of this cover, it looks pretty fun. It's got a monster, a vampire, another monster, a witch, and a ghost. So make a prediction in your head. Do you think that this book is fiction? And make a prediction of what you think is going to happen in the story. Or do you think it's nonfiction? I think by looking at the pictures that you should know that it is fiction. That means that it's not a true story. It's made up. The night before Halloween. Twas the night before Halloween, and all through the house, all the creatures were stirring, except for the mouse. The monsters had gathered to plan and prepare for the trick-or-treaters who would soon be there. Mummies unraveled and put on new wraps. Spiders found corners and spun silky traps. Count Dracula grinned and slicked back his hair. Frankenstein's bride cried, I've nothing to wear. Hurry up, said a goal, who started to yawn. Oh, there's so much to do before bedtime at dawn. So the witches brewed up a magical potion, which set every monster and goblin in motion. They blew up balloons and hung streamers and lights and decorated till the wee hours of night. Meanwhile, the children were tucked snug in their beds while visions of candy corn danced in their heads. In the moon when they woke, it was Halloween day. There was bobbing for apples and rides in the hay. There were costume parties and games to be played. Cupcakes and candy, of course. A parade. After dinner were, was served and kids were done eating, it was finally time to go trick-or-treating. Moms repainted face, faces and straightened clown hats, put wings back on fairies, angels, and bats. Jack-o'-lanterns were set out on the porches with care. The gr the, their grin seemed to say, Knock if you dare. Gypsies and pirates and zombies and rags grab their bright flashlights and trick-or-treat bags. They walked down each lane, avenue, and street, rang every doorbell, ding dong, and said, trick or treat. But just when the children thought they were done, the princess said, we've forgotten just one. So they walked to the house at the top of the hill, which gave all the kids a spine tingling thrill. They stood on the porch and where and were ready to knock when they heard heavy footsteps and a churn of a lock when what to the curious eyes should loom but a wicked old witch holding a broom her cape how it shimmered her face oh how scary her hat was so pointy it frightened the fairy The witch said, welcome, we have a surprise. And the children said, run, it's not a disguise. The monsters were sad when the kids ran away. They wanted the children to come in and play. The wicked witch said, 
We can have our own fun. Come on, little monsters. The night's just begun. The monsters all cheered, yay, as they danced with delight. Happy Halloween to all, and to all a fright night.